Hello, beloved. This devotion is for Thursday of the fourth week after Pentecost, July 2nd, 2020. We begin with our opening versicle. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Our psalm for the week is Psalm 119, beginning at verse 153. Look on my affliction and deliver me, for I do not forget your law. Plead my cause and redeem me. Give me life according to your promise. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek your statutes. Great is your mercy, O Lord. Give me life according to your just decrees. Many are my persecutors and my adversaries, but I do not swerve from your testimonies. I look at the faithless with disgust because they do not keep your commands. Consider how I love your precepts. Give me life according to your steadfast love. The sum of your word is truth, and every one of your just and righteous decrees endures forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our hymn for the week is hymn number 685 from Lutheran Service Book, Let Us Ever Walk with Jesus. Let us ever walk with Jesus, follow his example pure, through a world that would deceive us and to sin our spirits lure. Onward in his footsteps treading, pilgrims hear our home above, full of faith and hope and love. Let us do the Father's bidding, faithful Lord with me abide. I shall follow where you guide. Let us suffer here with Jesus, and with patience bear our cross. Joy will follow all our sadness. Where he is, there is no loss. Though today we sow no laughter, we shall reap celestial joy. All discomforts that annoy shall give way to mirth hereafter. Jesus, here I share your woe. Help me there your joy to know. Let us gladly die with Jesus, since by death he conquered death. He will free us from destruction, give to us immortal breath. Let us mortify all passion that would lead us into sin. And the grave that shuts us in shall but prove the gate to heaven. Jesus, here with you I die, there to live with you on high. Let us also live with Jesus he has risen from the dead, that to life we may awaken. Jesus, you are now our head. We are your own living members. Where you live, there we shall be, in your presence constantly. Living there with you forever, Jesus, let me faithful be. Life eternal grant to me. Today's reading is from the book of Joshua, the seventh chapter. But the people of Israel broke faith in regard to the devoted things. For Achan, the son of Carmi, son of Zabdi, son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took some of the devoted things. 
and the anger of the Lord burned against the people of Israel. Joshua sent men from Jericho to A, which is near Beth Avon, east of Bethel, and said to them, Go up and spy out the land. And the men went up and spied out A. And they returned to Joshua and said to him, Do not have all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and attack A. Do not make the whole people toil up there, for they are few. So about three thousand men went up there from the people, and they fled before the men of A. And the men of A killed about thirty-six of their men, and chased them before the gate as far as Shevarim, and struck them at the descent. And the hearts of the people melted and became as water. Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell to the earth on his face before the ark of the Lord until the evening, he and the elders of Israel. And they put dust on their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, why have you brought this people over the Jordan at all to give us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us? Would that we had been content to dwell beyond the Jordan. O oh Lord, what can I say when Israel has turned their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear of it and will surround us and cut off our name from the earth. And what will you do for your great name? The Lord said to Joshua, Get up. Why have you fallen on your face? Israel has sinned. They have transgressed my covenant that I commanded them. They have taken some of the devoted things. They have stolen and lied and put them among their own belongings. Therefore, the people of Israel cannot stand before their enemies. They turn their backs before their enemies because they have become devoted for destruction. I will be with you no more unless you destroy the devoted things from among you. Get up. Consecrate the people and say, Consecrate yourselves for tomorrow. For thus says the Lord, God of Israel, There are devoted things in your midst, O Israel. You cannot stand before your enemies until you take away the devoted things from among you. In the morning, therefore, you shall be brought near by your tribes. And the tribe that the Lord takes by lot shall come near by clans. And the clan that the Lord takes shall come near by households. And the household that the Lord takes shall come near man by man. And he who is taken with the devoted things shall be burned with fire, he and all that he has, because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he has done an outrageous thing in Israel. So Joshua rose early in the morning and brought Israel near tribe by tribe. And the tribe of Judah was taken. And he brought near the clans of Judah, and the clan of the Zerahites was taken. And he brought near the clan of the Zerahites man by man, and Zabdi was taken. And he brought near his household man by man, and Achan, the son of Carmi, son of Zabdi, son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, was taken. Then Joshua said to Achan, My son, give glory to the Lord God of Israel, and give praise to him. And tell me now what you have done. Do not hide it from me. And Achan answered Joshua, Truly I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and this is what I did. When I saw among the spoil a beautiful cloak from Shinar, and two hundred shekels of silver, and a bar of gold weighing fifty shekels, then I coveted them and took them, and see they are hidden in the earth inside my tent with the silver underneath. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran to the tent, and behold, it was hidden in his tent with the silver underneath. And they took them out of the tent and brought them to Joshua and to all the people of Israel, and they laid them down before the Lord. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan the son of Zerah, and the silver, and the cloak, and the bar of gold, and his sons, and daughters, and his oxen, and donkeys, and sheep, and his tent, and all that he had. And they brought them up to the valley of Achor. And Joshua said, 
Why did you bring trouble on us? The Lord brings trouble on you today. And all Israel stoned him with stones. They burned them with fire and stoned them with stones. And they raised over him a great heap of stones that remains to this day. Then the Lord turned from his burning anger. Therefore, to this day, the name of that place is called the Valley of Achor. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, who have been since the world began that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham to grant us that we, being delivered from the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, by the working of your Holy Spirit, grant that we may gladly hear your word proclaimed among us and follow its directing. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. With overflowing joy, the Church of Jesus Christ celebrates today the Feast of the Visitation of Our Lord. We read from Celebrating the Saints by William Whedon. St. Luke's Gospel records in chapter 1 the visit of Mary to her kinswoman Elizabeth, when Mary was newly with child and Elizabeth in her sixth month. It would be the first meeting of John the Baptist and the Lord whom he was to serve. From within the house, Elizabeth hears the greeting of her kinswoman and a miracle happens. The child within her leaps for joy. Elizabeth is herself filled with the spirit and speaks as she greets Mary. It was a fearful secret Mary had been carrying. But she knows from the look of astonishment on Elizabeth's face that she too was in the know. God had let Elizabeth in on the great secret of the ages. She cries out, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the sound of your greeting came to my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Perhaps she gave a knowing glance over at Zechariah, sitting silently in his corner, silent since he had doubted the words of Gabriel. Her next words seem aimed at him. 
And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. You can almost see Zechariah laughing silently in agreement. The young Mary melts into a song of praise that is reminiscent of Hannah's hymn in 1 Samuel 2. We call Mary's song her Magnificat from the first words of the song in Latin. In it, she praises God for his kind regard of her, a lonely and despised person. She praises his upside-down way of working, where he fills the hungry with good and sends the rich away empty, lifts up the lowly and tumbles the mighty from their thrones. Above all, she rejoices in how the fruit of her womb, the child whose heart now beats beneath her own, is the fulfillment of God's great promise to Abraham about the seed who would come to bring blessing to all. Mary's song of praise is the traditional canticle of the church that we delight to sing at vespers or evening prayer, even as Zechariah's canticle is sung in the morning. By singing it with her, we confess that we too are among those for whom the Lord has done great things. And what is greater than the Son of God becoming flesh for us in Mary's womb to bring us all the blessing of eternal life? We pray. Almighty God, you chose the Virgin Mary to be the mother of your Son, and made known through her your gracious regard for the poor and lowly and despised. Grant that we may receive your word in humility and faith, and so be made one with Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We conclude with Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, order our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen. God bless your day, beloved.